All right, guys, today on The Blueprint, we had some great conversation with D from Alpha Reliable Title. Um, we learned a lot. Um, I mentioned on the podcast how new I am in, in real estate, only being a few years licensed. And title companies sometimes can be this foreign area. Not too many people know about the services that they provide or how much they can protect you, whether you're a buyer and a seller. Um, so you don't want to miss out on the conversation today. It was a really good one. Check us out on The Blueprint Podcast. Hello and welcome back to the Blueprint Podcast. We have something fun for you today. My name is Andrew April and I'm actually here today with D from Alpha Reliable Title. Now for myself, I'm a pretty new agent still. I've only sold new construction and the title work is very different when working with new construction compared to resale. So I'm very excited to share with you guys, the consumers, um, about what exactly is a title company? What is their part in a real estate transaction? Is it important? Is it not important? Um, how much can it protect you? Who knows? So I'll be learning learning a lot myself today. Um, and just want to say huge thanks to you, D, uh, for coming on to the show. Yeah, sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. And uh, it's a pleasure for me to be on the Blueprint podcast with you as well. And uh even you being a new agent, I know you got this. I know you're pretty steadfast in what you do from the little I know about you. So today's going to be a great show. And with my experience, 34 years in the title industry, starting from wow. my banking experience in Jamaica and launching here in Fort Lauderdale, Florida for 10 years. I then moved here to Orlando and I've been here since. So... I have stayed in the industry through thick and thin, ups and downs. I've experienced over three decades of this market. So I have a lot of insightful information and I think that's what makes a good title company. So I'm gonna share some of that with you today. Yeah, wow, um, wow. Uh, you just said a, a lot. Let's unpack some of that there. Um, so background, background, um, Where? what's your ethnicity? Uh, that's a good question because it's always hard for folks to figure out where I'm from. Mm -hmm. You know, um, uh, my, uh, background is 100% Indian, okay. but my grandparents were born in Jamaica. Mm. My parents were born in Jamaica and I was born in Jamaica. I see. Uh, but we are 100% Indian blood and, but we're Jamaicans. And that's just such a cool mixture. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, <laughs> I like to use that to, to confuse people. Yeah. So I do do that because yeah. they think I'm Guyanese. They think I'm from Trinidad. Yeah. And no one has ever guessed that I'm actually Jamaican. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah. Wow. And what, what was that like um, being Jamaican um, and coming to the States and starting a title company in Fort Lauderdale? Yeah, that was, um, it was, it was tough, but at the same time I expected it because it's a new culture and, um, to adapt to a brand new culture and having the realization hit you that what you were and who you were in your country and the status you had, you're not bringing that here. And if you think you're going to come here on the same level, that was an eye opening experience for me. Mm. I really wanted to go back the same month I got to the United States almost 40 years ago. Wow. Because yeah. I left Jamaica as a junior banking supervisor mm -hmm. and I came here to clean floors and uh, do what most immigrants do, you know, elderly care mm -hmm. and stuff like that. I then launched into uh, working for two TV stations. Uh, I worked for Channel 6 in Miami and Channel 10. And so it was rough because I remember having to change clothes in the elevators, yeah. you know, to get to one TV station to the next, you know. And um, the best part was being an immigrant with an accent and people do not believe that we speak English. We don't have a language. I was editing the news at Channel 10 for the newscaster. 
mm. being a Jamaican that just got here. Mm -hmm. But there would be so many flaws in the news that if he read it like that, I would have a fit. Yeah. 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 And so I stayed in those jobs for a while. I made good money because I was working with a temp agency. So I was cleaning up. Gotcha. Yeah. But at yeah, the same yeah. time, I wasn't fulfilled. I wasn't feeling like I was fulfilling my true passion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can I can only imagine. So I am I was born here, but my family is originally from Barbados. Oh. My grandma came, oh. moved everyone over. And so I from I guess from a me seeing the adults in the family mm -hmm. as a kid, I saw how hard they worked. So I yeah. understand that perseverance that that you have, right? Um, it makes sense how well spoken you are for you to <laughs> to to hear mm -hmm. that you were um mm -hmm. editing that 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 content on the news channel. Um and I think it's so interesting when you come from another country, there's just so much system wise that you don't know about the US. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I yeah. remember my family not knowing about the voting processes or who are in positions of power in all these different, I guess, industry exactly. and worlds, you know. Did you experience any of that? I did. I experienced it maybe on a different level mm -hmm. where I would apply for certain jobs and my employers didn't understand the visa process and the paperwork that we had to get in order to legally work in the United States. So I experienced that quite a bit in my first few jobs I see. until I got my citizenship and then it's just smooth flowing from there. Yeah. 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 See this, it, your whole story really sounds like a, a huge story of perseverance, right? Which I which definitely, I def definitely uh, commend you and applaud you for. I mean, I imagine that that's a, a value and a trait that's significant mm -hmm. for title work. Um, I promise for the viewers of the blueprint, I'm, I'm, we'll get, I'll loop it back to what title uh, services are um, overall, but I actually want to hear what, what are some of the worst experiences or um, any of the experiences that you really needed to tap into that perseverance to finish up or finish through the title work? Uh, perseverance for me is something that I admire in just anyone I meet because if you lack perseverance, you'll tap out when the time is, was almost going to be right for you. And so I teach a lot on that to my peers and, uh, to folks in church and just the small groups as well, because, uh, I'm, I'm, well grounded in biblical sp principles mm -hmm. and you know the bible talks a lot about perseverance and so i take that uh very seriously mm -hmm. because if you want to get to anywhere in this life you've got to have perseverance yeah, and if i had not persevered i wouldn't be here on this blueprint podcast today right. because there were so many things that came against me one because i'm an immigrant Two, I'm not expected to know as much as I know because I wasn't born here. Right. So uh, those reasons alone has caused a lot of my peers to tap out of this industry yeah. because of what they came up against. But I was determined to prove that it doesn't matter where you're from. If you study the area of business that you want to, be good at you, you can do it. There's, there's no one that should stop you other than yourself. Sometimes you also have to get out of your own way. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So alpha reliable title. So what exactly is a title company? If I was brand new, say, uh, let's imagine that I'm a brand new consumer. Um, and my realtor mentions something about this title company. Who, what exactly are you guys? Do you guys hold some money? Do you guys check on deeds? Like what's, what's, what is That's this? a very good question. So uh, the title industry falls under the insurance category of okay. professional business. Okay. Okay. So ultimately, pushing paper is not ultimately what we do. We actually issue insurance. We issue two policies, one to the homeowner. It's called an owner's title insurance policy. Okay. And we issue a policy to the lender to cover their loan as well. 
-hmm. But before we do that, there's so many steps to take in order to get to the point of issuing that insurance policy. So essentially, we're going to start out by doing all the title searches, uh, seeing what we find on the seller's title. Obviously, we're talking about resales. Mm -hmm. You're into new constructions. So there's hardly anything to find on a new construction yeah. title search because the home is just being built. Right, right. However, on a resale, mm -hmm. you're going to have to come up on mortgages, judgments, liens, even things like delinquent child support payments. Mm. That's something that we've had to disclose to so many people in heated conversations if it wasn't disclosed to, for example, the current wife. Mm -hmm. And there's some child support judgment on the husband's name. Mm -hmm. And it attaches to the title. I see. Uh, we have to review marital settlement agreements to make sure that if there's a divorce and the home is being sold, those proceeds are divided up according to the marital settlement agreement. Okay. So we get into a lot of uh, deep diving into paperwork. Yeah. So even though we're not attorneys, uh, we do what attorneys do on the same level of their title section of their law firm. So um, other than the title search, we also have to check the municipal records. We have to check for stuff like code violations, uh, uh, permitting, mm -hmm. uh, expired permits. There will be folks who have pulled a permit for offense, but after they got several quotes, it may be too costly for their pocket. Mm -hmm. They haven't closed out the permit or canceled the permit. Stuff like that, Andrew, we have to make sure it's resolved. So if a, if a permit's still open, um, does that present a problem it, for it, a sale to... We don't like to use the word problem, okay. but it, we cannot issue clear title mm -hmm. unless we address those matters. Okay. Now, it's important to note for even viewers who are realtors and yourself as well, if you're going to get into resales, it's it's really important to note that the title insurance does not cover matters found on the municipal lien search okay. unless they are recorded liens from the county. So a buyer and a seller can choose to waive the items listed on the municipal lien search, if they're just like an expired permit, you know, okay. uh, debris on property mm -hmm. by the county, the, if the county flagged the property for uh, abandoned vehicles, mm -hmm. the buyer may know that they're going to be clearing the land anyway. They're going to, so the buyer may sign a hold harmless and say, I just want to move on. That does not pre 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 prevent us from issuing title insurance got it so it's all an understanding basis however if the city or the county records in the public records okay. a lien then we have an issue because that's a problem that's a title problem gotcha. so we have to find a way to resolve it and once it's resolved then the transaction can continue to move forward yep yep and, sure. and so what about in the in the previous example, um, imagine there's some child support mm -hmm. um, that's unpaid and imagine I'm a seller. Mm -hmm. um, is it going to impact? Is, is that going to is it pro somewhat protecting me as well? Because I'm going to know, OK, if I do move forward with selling this home, some of the proceeds will be taken away. Is that how something like that would work? So what we do when we find delinquent child support payments, mm -hmm. we ask the seller uh, to go down to the court, mm -hmm. one, especially if they're disputing it, because also uh, names are very similar and sometimes exact. Mm -hmm. So your name can be Andrew Robinson. Someone can be Andrew R. Robinson. Mm -hmm. If the child support judgment is not listing the middle initial 
mm-hmm. or for example your date of birth the the person's date of birth or any part of their previous addresses then we really have to send them the the quickest and the best option is to send them down to the clerk of the courts and have them go provide their ID verify their social and see if it the clerk says this is you because there's more records that right. we're not able to see right. because some issues are private right so we may see the judgment but we may not see the follow up of paperwork with the uh, mother of the child's name and so on yeah so we have them resolve it they can pay it there if they go and it's a lot of money but they did confirm that that's them they may sometimes get a payoff letter from the county and just bring it to us at closing and we pay it out of the proceeds yeah this is this it sounds like it's very thorough work but it's it's nice to hear that absolutely no matter what comes up it seems like you guys have steps to address at least address hopefully resolve um any situation or scenario that does come up yeah yeah it's it's funny because i was at a networking event um three weeks ago and i was overhearing uh a dude that works at a title company and i think he was a marketing rep Mm -hmm. and i could hear the conversation and he actually told someone that i work at a title company and the person asked, so what exactly is a title company? And he says, well, all we do is just title searches and we sign the papers for the lenders. And I actually wanted to <laughs> get all up into that uh, conversation and say, like, hold on, hold on, hold on. What? Sir, <laughs> hold on a minute. I guess we can say that separates knowledge and experience mm. from just obtaining right. a state license right anyone can pass an exam right right no and that's and that's critical right i, I think on the realtor side we say um everyone can be a, a real estate agent but not mm-hmm. everyone's like a realtor you know um so yeah, yeah. i appreciate those those sentiments yeah. um okay question for you if 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 you guys find any situations where um someone is trying to buy a house and they bought a house and they find out that it wasn't really theirs, excuse me, the the sellers to sell? Or is that something that would have been found before? Well, it can be found before, and uh, uh, it can be found along the way. Okay. I have a file right this very moment mm-hmm. where the sellers were not aware that a contract was signed on their home. Mm. And it wa- it's not totally fraud, What happened is a family situation where the grandparent passed and this one cousin thought the house was left to her. But on the title, the grandparent had already signed a quit claim deed to another grandchild. Mm. So sometimes we, we don't like to throw around the word fraud. Yeah. Lack of knowledge or full disclosure is sometimes just missing. Yeah. And I think with that family, that's what happened. Mm-hmm. And granddad, when he signed a quit claim deed, his handwriting was kind of scribbly. So the other grandchild feels like granddaddy did not know what he was signing. Yeah. But at the same time, the documents exist. So right. we have to push through to find out, do we need to refer them to an attorney or, you know, they're going to come to some kind of mutual agreement, mm-hmm. you know, because yeah. it's just not something that can be solved in one conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's a tough one. And I mean, I've, yeah. I'm sure you've experienced, but I've even, I've experienced some of, you know, my grandparents or um, close family friends getting older and older and it's, sometimes not easy to understand what mm-hmm. they really want to do before that time comes for them as well. So exactly, I, I can imagine the confusion, um, mm-hmm. not just emotionally in the family, but in the documentation and the paperwork, right. you know, as well. Right. So um, you, you said something interesting there too, um, that can go both ways, ways that, that fraud term. 
Mm-hmm. Um, fraud is something that we deal with in a lot of different industries. Oh my right? God! It's definitely here with wiring and things like that. Let me What's tell that? you, you don't want to get me started. <laughs> oh, on, I, I kind of do. Uh, I kind of do <laughs> on the fraud that we're experiencing. Oh, no. The cyber attacks, the email phishing. You know, the the spyware, the malware, I have experienced it. Mm. And it's not something that I don't want to share. I do want to share it because even yourself as a realtor, you have no idea how your cell phone can be intercepted by just collecting my wire instructions and then forwarding th- through your cell phone to your buyer. Yeah. So the thing that we push and we're really, really still having pushbacks from a lot of agents and it's unfortunate because they learn this as well. They see what's happening in the market, right? And they're still insisting to collect the wire instructions from us to their email and then they're going to send it on to their buyer. So many people have lost their money yeah. during that process and the interception at that time, the buyer, the agent is obviously going to look at us. Right. Well, we're we're highly protected in my office since we had that one experience. We I don't know if there's anything else out there that is available that I don't have. Yeah, and uh, I feel very happy about the investments that I've made into protecting uh, our company and our client our clients money Mm -hmm. by investing into some of the best cyber uh, platforms because what's happened to some of the nation's largest title companies lately, I'm sure you saw what happened. Uh, We're having to close some of those files because they were hacked on the largest scale. They're fortune 500 companies. They're publicly traded. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, MGM Resorts in Las Vegas, they were hacked recently. And that's just by employee just not taking the time or the company is not giving the right education and knowledge of what's going on out there to the employees that speaking to the customers. So don't quote me on it, but I think what I read about MGM is someone called saying, hey, Andrew, uh, this is so-and-so from IT. I just want to jump on on your computer for a quick minute because uh, we're trying to install a program and I'm having a kick, a pushback. So I'm just going to walk you through it. And so the employee apparently did it. Got access to everything. Everything. Yeah. Yeah, really easy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, see, but it sounds like um, you guys with Alpha Reliable Title have put the right protocols in place and, and the right electronic systems as well to to support making sure that these processes go smoothly for anybody that's working with you guys. Yeah, we have. We uh, use a secured portal mm-hmm. to collect and send out wire instructions anything to do with their banking information, uh, we go through a secured portal. Mm -hmm. And so uh, not only do we have cyber insurance, that company also adds another layer of protection when we're collecting uh, and sending wire instructions. Even payoff statements. Payoff statements are coming from the nation's largest lenders and embodied in that statement on like page three in the very fine prints are the lenders wire instructions for the title company to send the payoff funds. We've had a payoff statement from one of the nation's largest companies where the hackers hacked and changed just the wire instructions. Mm -hmm. So luckily we had time enough on that payoff where uh, Daniel overnighted a check for the 300 and change thousand Mm -hmm. to the lender. The way we found out was that the lender had just dispersed the insurance payment from their escrow account. 
And so when the payoff check got there, it was reflecting a small shortage. Mm -hmm. So the lender called the client, the client called us and say, why did you send the wrong amount to my payoff lender? They say it's uh, $400 short. When we checked, the payoff letter was good. Mm -hmm. The amount was good that we sent, mm -hmm. but there was a cross between when the FedEx got there and when they dispersed the insurance check, right? So it ended up with a little shortage. That happens quite often. Uh, however, we were going to now send, the client brought in the 400 We were going to wire it to the lender okay. when that lender sends Daniel the updated statement with just the shortage and the wire instructions. When he went, he realized that's not what was on the first letter. And when he called the lender, sure thing. Wow. And you would think that these big like conglomerates, these these huge companies have the the top notch protection and mm -hmm. just can't be touched. But yes. sounds like it's uh, you've experienced See, what, it. uh, what we've seen in the industry mm -hmm. is that they were targeting smaller companies like myself. Yeah. Then they're making a shift. They're letting us relax for a little bit. Mm hmm. But it's not going away. Yeah. So you, you know can't it. let your guard down. I know you know it. Yeah. So they're now turning to the bigger companies because they feel like they can tap into lower scale employees and get what they want out yeah. of those people. And that's the trend they're taking, the hacking. But it's going to come back around full circle to smaller people, even realtors. Yeah. So these are really big numbers, right? That you that you guys are 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 sending over to the lenders, receiving as you guys yeah. manage everything at the closing table. Um, I'm actually not too familiar with how large or what limits there are on things like cashier's check, but mm -hmm. imagine if I'm a local buyer and a local seller, um, and I have some money that I need to bring to the closing mm -hmm. table. Um, if I didn't want to do a wire situation. Um, could I go to my local bank and bring a cashier's check to the closing table? That's a very good question because in the past, prior to all this fraud, mm -hmm. cashier's checks were totally acceptable and closing would be fully funded instantly. Now, if it's, it's actually up to the discretion of the title company, on the amount that we want to be okay with. For example, if your cash to close is 2000 yeah. and I know you, or I know your agent pretty well, mm -hmm. I'll say, Andrew, your client wants to bring a cashier's check for 2000. Are you comfortable with this? And if you give me that go ahead, not that I'm only going to rely on your go ahead, but it's going to help me make that decision mm -hmm. because cashier's checks can also be returned by the banks. So we can fund a closing on a cashier's check and it can bounce wow. because we've had instances I didn't know that. where, didn't yeah, know that. people think that because it's, the, it's, it's it, a cashier's check is bought and paid for, mm -hmm. but the wrong employee can sign that cashier's check, which the limit was not within their scope. Gotcha. So gotcha. A, a teller can sign a cashier's check for 28,000 or 35,000 when their limit is 10,000. Gotcha. They needed a upper level gotcha. manager yeah. to have signed that cashier's check. Yeah. Cashier's checks are also serialized. Okay. So there can be a fraudulent number cashier's check, which is on the, list of fraudulent cashier's check. So even cashier's checks over uh, a reasonable amount of, let's say 2000, mm -hmm. uh, we have to wait for it to clear. Yeah. See, this is where I love these questions because this is where your experience keeps tapping in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I would have had no idea. Mm -hmm. um, this is really good information for folks. So I appreciate yep. you sharing it. Um, okay. So what about a situation where, um, or how many situations do you stumble upon where people may come to your title company with a situation where um, a grandfather wants to sign off a house over to a grandchild or something of that nature? 
and they would prefer not to have a realtor in this situation. Is that something that you would uh, agree upon or advise against or uh, what are your thoughts around around that? Okay, so that can be twofold. Mm -hmm. uh, you say the grandfather wants a sign off. If, if you're talking about signing off just by way of a quit claim deed, skipping title search, skipping all the preliminaries, skipping right, all the, right. the process and just sign the deed over to that grandchild, uh, that's yeah. separate and apart okay. from if a grandparent want to sell okay. the house and skipping a realtor okay. to their, their grandchild. So let's take the first uh, example, yeah. quit claim deeds. Mm -hmm. A lot of realtors are out there selling quit claim deed ideas to not only their family members, but also to clients. That's one of the worst things a realtor could do. Okay. That's not doing their client any justice. A quit claim deed is what it says. Quit claim deeding. So they're quitting from any liabilities and any matters that's on that title that could adversely affect the title in the future. A quit claim deed also doesn't have title insurance. We cannot issue title insurance on a quit claim deed. So we're so it's like if so if I did a quit claim deed from me to you, I'm saying, hey, this is on you now. Anything that may come up in the future that a title company or Alpha Reliable Title finds. Hey, I, I quit claimed it. Exactly. That's on you. Exactly. Okay. What if you haven't paid IRS for four years and there's a 40,000 IRS lien against you? That'd be a bad situation. Not for in this situation. That would, what if I'd you be have an accident and State Farm settles the claim, but the amount in your insurance policy was not sufficient to pay the victims in the accident and they sued you and they got a, fi a judgment against you, but you just didn't have the money to pay it. So the judgment is just going to sit out there on your name. Right. Once that takes place, that judgment say, hello, I'm here. Gotcha. Now going back to the contract situation, mm -hmm. there's so many instances where uh, a family may call, may call my office and say, hey, D, uh, I want to sell my house to my nephew, but okay. I really don't want to use a realtor. Uh, can you help us? Yes, I can help you with my title end. And I can cut some fees and, and give you a break uh, just because I know you and it's family. But I'm never going to tell you to bypass a realtor's experience because I am not a realtor. What you know is different and to protect the buyers and sellers in different ways than how I'm going to be able to protect them. Mm -hmm. So I will always say you don't necessarily need to list the property on the MLS or uh, pay vast amount of uh, commission but you need to hire a realtor even on a flat fee. See if you have an, a licensed agent because you may need them along the process. Mm -hmm. There's inspection report that needs to be inspected. There's the appraiser uh, that you may need a professional person to speak to. Right. The lender may, may try to pull something that is not sounding right, but right. because they know that there's not that middle professional person mm -hmm. dealing directly with the buyer and the seller, there's so much that can go wrong. Yeah. So it's not that I'm looking out for realtors because they are who feeds me, but it's the right thing to do for a person when property is, is changing hands. And I, I really appreciate you saying that. And um, one thing that I try to express to anyone, whether they're working with me or not working with me, they just have general real estate questions. I let them know, listen, if you are working with me or if you just want someone I can recommend you to, I'm not just this one sole proprietor out there, you know, even though it's exactly. my name as a realtor, yeah. like a good, smooth, solid real estate transaction is not about me. It's about the team. Mm -hmm. And that's why I like to surround my, 
my myself with people with high integrity, mm-hmm. with that perseverance, folks who are going to do the right thing, because that's ultimately what's going to have a buyer or a seller protected through yeah. this transaction. Yeah. Absolutely. And even with the writing of the contract, you right. know, uh, right. number one, I'm not going to write that contract for them because I can't. They think I can because I have the knowledge to do it, but I'm not licensed to do it. Mm-hmm. Right. My license does not, after 34 years of being in business, mm-hmm. my license will never allow me to write a real estate contract. Indeed. So I will have to say, if they push back on getting a realtor who will get their brokerage to do a flat fee, affordable, just to be in the middle for them to smooth any uh, tough situation, I will have to say to them, you guys need to go write your contract mm-hmm. on your own. Yep, and when folks need certain specific advice, especially maybe certain <laughs> steps in anything related to yep. title or title searches, I can't do that. Mm-hmm. I can tell you a little bit about what I know, but you need to talk to D. Yeah. <laughs> you need to talk to yes. D, okay? Yeah. I'll connect I you always guys. say stay talk in your lane. D. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Stay in your lane. I don't want anything but what's in my lane. So yeah, enough. because, you know, you know one of the thing is to giving experience, which is outside the scope of your duties, you can create more confusion as well. You absolutely. can create panic for the buyers mm-hmm. because you're explaining it just from the little knowledge of what you've gotten. Yeah just dealing with your closings, yeah. but it can be so way off. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, in, in that same, so in that same scenario, um, imagine we do have a closing. Um, and you have plenty of offices here in central Florida, but if I have a closing that isn't nearby, um, do I have to physically be here to uh, close with Alpha Reliable Title? No, Alpha Reliable Title is licensed for the entire state of Florida. I see. And with uh, some of the best uh, notary closing platforms, uh, we use the best vetting processes. So I can close a file as smoothly as if it was in my office anywhere in the state of Florida. I see. I see. So it doesn't matter know. where in Florida, we do closings all over the state of Florida. I am from South Florida. So I do have a uh, office in South Florida, a satellite office, and I have several closers. And a lot of my clientele are still from South Florida, even clients after 34 years. Wow. They will not close yeah. anywhere else. Yeah. And that, that just speaks to the type of service that you provide, reliability. Mm-hmm. So uh, this was really fun. This is really fun, Dee. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for coming on the blueprint. Um, any last words that you might want to say to anyone who may be watching? Um, I I just want to say to uh, prospective buyers, maybe, uh, even though the market may look like it's a little bit unstable mm-hmm. at this point, uh, based on what I'm seeing and from my experience, I've seen over three decades of up and downs, up and downs. And uh, it is always going to be beneficial, almost always, to buy than to rent. Because you're paying a mortgage at the end of the day, even if you're renting, it's just not your own mortgage. Mm -hmm. It's someone else's mortgage. So rent is always going to continue to rise because just in the last quarter of last year, over uh, 3,700 people have migrated to Orlando, Mm. over 3,700. Florida is not called a sunshine state for no reason. Right. It is where people want to come and live. Absolutely. Especially after the pandemic, where people have had to stay indoors Mm -hmm. and and stuff like that. People want to get out, and Florida is the best place to do that. Orlando is number three in cities for folks relocating. Mm -hmm. Florida is number 10. So houses are going to sell. People are going to buy. Yeah. And at the same time, it's going to come down to educating those buyers, educating the sellers. And they will see the reason behind it. 
they need to learn about equity, mm -hmm. how they're paying their mortgage. And yes, it may just be almost the same as if they were paying rent. But now you're also saving money because you're gaining equity. Mm -hmm. When you were paying the landlord, if you were to move from that apartment, you move with your bags. Yeah, nothing. But if you move from your own home, you're moving with some money. Trust me. You're yeah. you're going to have some equity in your property. You know, hearing this from you, you know, it 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 just puts uh there's a lot more weight to it, you know, having 30 plus years of experience is different. Absolutely. You know, someone just kind of knows that yep. versus experiencing it over all these years. I was telling someone yesterday when I started in this business, mm -hmm. interest rates were 11 and 13%. Houses wow. were flying off the market. I was in South Florida. We were closing 60 and 70 files a month. Mm -hmm. Interest rates were 11%. Now, prices were lower, yes. But so was paychecks. Right. Yeah. So right. people like to focus on, well, D, houses were much cheaper. Yeah. And so were paychecks. Yeah. People were earning eight dollars an hour yeah and you know what and you're absolutely right about the relocation too i think tremaine um just sent us over yahoo or, or u-haul every year or u-haul every year comes out with some stats on how mm -hmm. the moving trends were in the previous mm -hmm. years and it's palm bay in melbourne that's mm -hmm. been number one um, in 2023, mm -hmm. which is what, 45 minutes, an hour, depending on where you are right. in Orlando away. Right. Um, I went to college over there. Um, so yeah, people are going to keep on coming. People are yeah. going to keep on buying yeah. houses. So really appreciate you dropping that info. Um, yeah. giving us that, that, what you see in the Absolutely. market right now, um, and coming and coming on. Yeah. Yeah. It yeah. was fun. It was fun. It was. And I hope you persevere in this industry. Thank you so much. Hey, with, with folks like you on the team, I mean, it's already written. Our offices are always open. Thank you. Uh, Thank Tremaine you. knows. Uh, all our agents know. Mm -hmm. We have our brokers and our agents come in just to chit chat. Yeah. If you want to pick up lunch, come to the office, brainstorm ideas, and just pick our brains. If you have a tough situation, we answer questions even though the file is being closed at another title company. Because wow. there's business for everybody. Wow. Yeah. I'm not looking to get 100% of any real estate agent's business. Gotcha. I'll get what is meant for me. Wow. And yeah. I won't leave you hanging even if you are stuck in a closing somewhere else and it doesn't feel right. Call me. Yeah. yeah. See, and that's, that's, that's what's what I love about life. You know, we've... um. We've met before this this podcast briefly, mm -hmm. right, over the last few years. But um, I've never been able to sit down with you in this capacity yeah, and just yeah. hearing, you know, how you speak. Yeah. It, it just it it just confirms. I, I love when I realize my life is moving in the right direction because when you meet people with similar mindsets who move in certain ways, um, it's very unselfish. It's very, you know, look, mm -hmm. I'm not here just to build myself up and speak mm -hmm. and talk about myself. I'm here for everyone's success, right. yours as well. So. Again, I really appreciate you being here. Um, yep. Thank you for joining today. Anytime. And thank you for having me on. So, guys, please do not forget, um, if you have any questions or if you have any thoughts about anything we talked about today, um, reach out, drop a note in the comments, um, like, like, like the uh, channel today and subscribe to the channel. Um, and with that, we'll see you in the next one. Click like and share. Yes.